Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. A lot of foreigners don't really have any idea of what American high schoolers actually do in school. And many foreigners have a very idealistic idea of all based off of those stupid American movies and TV shows. Foreigners think that American high school is like this. American high school is like this. Why do you wear your hair like that? My hair looks so sexy pushback. Katie, will you please tell him his hair looks sexy pushback? <laughs> Okay, a bit of an exaggeration. Here I am giving you a little bit of a reality check on what American high school is like in movies versus what it actually is like. The characters. In every good American high school movie, you're gonna have the jock, the nerd, the pretty girl, the loser, you know, the typical American typecast. We do have all those type of characters that you see in the movies. But I have to say there is a new American high school stereotype that seems to be taken over and it's called the overachiever. We're the generation that grew up during the crisis. We're the generation that knows if you don't go to college, you're not going to get a job and if you don't get a job, you're not going to be able to buy food and if you can't buy food, you're going to starve and die. We do everything that's possible to get into a good American college because we know that since there's a thousand, you have to go to a good one if you want to get a good job. But you also know that you can't afford a good one. So what do we do? We try to become this perfect candidate for these American colleges so that we can get into the best college and get the best financial aid. What do American colleges want from American students? Well, they don't want you to just have good grades, but you also have to be an athlete. You also have to have work experience. You need to be a volunteer because that's the only way we know that you actually have a heart and you're not just in it for the money because too many Americans are in it for the money. You have to be a good writer, you have to be persuasive, but you also have to be good at math and you have to be a good speaker. If you're not a good speaker, you can just meh, meh. Because of these almost, you'd think, impossible standards that American colleges put on American high school students, you get this new class of student, the overachiever. Now, what's the, a typical day in the life of an overachiever like? I can tell you because I was one of them. I would wake up at 5 to get beautified and then catch the bus at 6.30, get to school, do slash finish all my homework that was due for the 7 or 8 classes I have to take that day, then eat breakfast because of course you're not going to have breakfast at 5 when you're at home. First class at 7.20. From 7.20 until about 2.45 you have class all day and then after school is done you have to go do your sport because like I said American colleges want athletes we don't give a damn if you study as a matter of fact in America athletes are more valued than smart people so you better do a sport you go to your sport until about Mm, from 3 to 5 p.m., sometimes later. After you're done with practice, you're gonna either go home and finish your homework or do your volunteering that the colleges again want or work because you need money to pay for said college. So then you get home from work. In my case, I would usually get home from work at around 9 or 10. At least get my homework started. The new homework for the next day needed to get started. If I was lucky, I would go to bed around 11 or 12 just to wake up the next day and do it all over again. How do you do this every single day? How can you live this way? Well, you tell yourself that you're gonna get into a good college that's gonna give you a good job so you can buy food and not starve. When I watch all of these American movies, I always wonder how do these girls look so good? The girls in my high school didn't look like that. And not because we didn't want to, but half the things I see these high schoolers wearing in movies, we are not allowed to wear in real life. Most American high schools have really strict dress codes. For my school, you could not wear a shirt that showed your shoulders. This was outlawed. You could not show cleavage, couldn't show, could not wear this. You couldn't wear leggings, you couldn't wear yoga pants, you couldn't wear a skirt or shorts that were shorter than your your fingers to your side. And third time, you couldn't even wear t-shirts with words on them at my school. So I don't know where all of these people in all of these movies are getting these outfits from because you sure as hell can't wear them in real life. And the cheerleading outfits. I was a cheerleader in high school and our outfits were never as cute as the ones you see in the movies. 
gotta say. Prom. In every high school movie, you get to see all these little American students going to prom, planning prom, and having the best night of their lives at prom. If the best night of your life was prom, you have a sad life. Prom is so overrated. I mean, I'm not gonna say that I wouldn't go to prom because, again, it's part of that American, you know, experience. But, um, do you know how much those prom dresses cost? I have friends that spend $300 on a dress that you are gonna wear once. The prom tickets were expensive, you gotta take pictures, you gotta find a date, it's a whole lot of stress, and you know what, to me, it wasn't that worth it. The, the best part about prom was the food. But that was it. It's never anything like it is in the movies, all this magic and sparkles and fireworks. The cliques. I think the cafeteria of an American high school illustrates this really, really well. For example, at my high school, the cafeteria was first of all split into the white side and the black side, which didn't really literally mean white people could only sit there and black people could only sit there. It was just the way that things worked out. Now on the white side, you had the cafeteria split into another four sections. You had the freshmen, the seniors, the juniors, and the sophomores who would eat together. And then on the black side, you had everybody else that wasn't white. The splits were the jocks, but the girls that hung around the job. Then you had all the immigrants. In my school consisted of Haitians, Chinese, South, lots of different types of South Americans. Sometimes I would sit over there. Then you have the special needs kids that sit next to them, and the bad kids. Right next to the food were usually the, the bad kids. On the white side, you had like the, the, skate, the skater dudes and the potheads. They, they all usually sat together, and the band nerds. Yep, they were there too. Have you ever noticed that in American high schools, all the time at school is spent at the locker or in the cafeteria? I think this has led people to believe that we just, at school, we just eat food and hang out at our lockers, but that's not even true. At my school, when we would switch classes, because that's another thing in American high school, you have to go to all your different classes, and if you're unlucky like me, to go to a college prep style high school where classes were in different buildings to get you in the mood for college, you had to sometimes walk across campus after each class, and we only had five minutes to do it. And then as for lunch, lunch was 30 minutes long. The food sucks. Just like in the movies, the American high school food sucks. And we don't even get the option to go home and eat lunch with our families like you guys do over here in Europe, like you guys do in Italy, breakfast and lunch. There's also this idea that all American high school students do is jump around and sing and dance. Like it's all one big freaking happy musical. We do sing sometimes because we have classes for that. One thing I love about American high school is that we got Quite a few electives. When you're at school for six or seven hours a day, they can't be teaching you math and history all the time. So you get one or two electives that you get to do, and they're usually pretty fun. In my school, you could do photography, you could do choir, you could do drama, and I really, really took advantage of that. Americans get to pick these awesome, fun classes to take. No, I just said you get to pick two. Everything else is regulated by the state. Every state has their own. Um, every state has their own regulations on what you. You have to learn. In my state of Connecticut, we had to do three years of math, three years of science, three years of history, one semester of which had to be civic, so you know, like passing how laws are passed and the American government and all that stuff, and uh, four years of English. So that's why seniors a lot of the time get to pick extra classes that are geared toward they, what they want to do in life. For example, when I was a senior, I took like economics, European history, statistics. I took a really concentrated course specifically because I knew I was going to be studying economics. But the other years, we have to learn just like everybody else. Which in a way is a really good thing, I think, because, okay, sure, I always complain about how I didn't take calculus, and so now math in Italy is so hard for me. Yeah, that does suck, and that is true. But in all the other classes that I've taken, economics, economic history, statistics, I was ahead of the game, and I got really good grades in those classes. The movies always paint American high school as really extremes. It was either the worst period of somebody's life or the best period of somebody's life. I have to say that personally for me, and I think in general, American high school, but um, usually it's just, it's just okay. It's just all right. You get through it, you do it. There are some memories you can look back and smile on. There are some memories that you just wish you could forget. I hope that you guys found this video entertaining. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one. Mwah.